Hi everyone, my name is Virginia Aparicio and I'm going to briefly discuss the Precede Proceed planning model. The Precede Proceed model is widely used by public health professionals as a framework for planning and evaluating community and or health intervention. The model focuses on the community as a basis for health promotion and it provides intervention and program planners a comprehensive plan to assess the health needs and the quality of life of specified population and helps in designing, implementing, and evaluating health intervention and or programs to meet those needs. Precede seed Proceed is an acronym. Precede stands for Predisposing, Reinforcing, and Enabling Causes in Educational Diagnoses and Evaluation. Proceed stands for Policy, Regulatory, and or Organizational Constructs in Educational and Environmental Development. So what I do is I break precede proceed into two words. Precede includes everything that is done first. In this case, meaning we are looking at or assessing the causes of a health issue to see what can be done to address the problem. In other words, it represents the process that happens before or leads up to your intervention. And with proceed, we're looking at things that come after, you know, that involve looking at policy, rules and regulations, that guide behaviors. Um, looking at organizational culture um, and interventions that can be educational and also environmental, meaning they can involve changing the um, environment or systems in place to make it easier for individuals to change uh, their behavior. Uh, Pre-seed portion consists of uh, four phases, uh, starting with the social assessment, um, and here is where you identify you know, quality of life, of the population, you're figuring out uh, social problems and the needs of a specified population and identifying um, your desired you know, outcome result. Epidemiological assessment involves um, health factors of the issue that you're focusing on. You can collect data on you know, um, prevalence, incidence rates of certain common um, diseases or health issues. Phase three, educational and ecological assessment. This is um, examining the factors uh, that influence behavior, lifestyle, and responses to environment. So here you identify the factors that will create the behavior or environmental changes that you decide on. And then administrative uh, and policy assessment is identifying or assessing factors that would affect or support your proposed intervention and or make sure um, it's important to make sure that your intervention aligns with the policies that are in place. Proceed involves the actual implementation and um, evaluation of your intervention. So phase five implementation, you design the intervention, you assess the availability of your resources and now you implement your program. Um, Phase six, process evaluation. Here, you know, you decide um, if the program is actually reaching the targeted population um, and if you're achieving your objectives. Are you doing the things that you had planned to do? Phase seven, impact evaluation. Here you measure um, to see if there's a change in the health behavior of your targeted population. And with phase eight, outcome evaluation, you ask, you know, is the intervention or the program um, that you implemented uh, leading to the desired outcomes that you envisioned in the social assessment. Um, I provided a visual of the precede proceed model. Um, I don't assume that an audience will know, you know what I mean, so I really like this model because it provides enough detail, um, but it's not too wordy and um, still very clear though. I like how, you know, it even tells the audience where to start and guides them with arrows. Um, through the process. Start with the planning phase and then it leads all the way out to the evaluation phase um, at the end uh, with your desired outcome. The weaknesses of the precede proceed model, it does require a lot of time and resources. Um, there's a lot of planning involved, uh, data and information that you have to gather in the beginning, and then you develop your you know, intervention, implement it, and then you still have to uh, measure you know, different outcomes and process and um, impact. The model does not uh, give a 
detailed plan and there's no guarantee that the intervention will solve the issue so you know you put a lot of time in um, into gathering information and developing your your intervention and at the end you know you could still find out that maybe there was a factor that you didn't consider um, or for whatever reason your intervention does not address the problem the strengths of the precede proceed model it does provide a foundation for successful intervention and um, or a program and it does emphasize uh, community needs so it does incorporate the ideas of the community you know and it requires um, you to see if the inter intervention that um, you're going to implement does it address you know the community's needs um, and what effect is it likely to have on the community uh, engaging the community is good um, and a lot of times if your community is uh, engaged it will help um, with the intervention with the success of the intervention um, intervention process can be adjusted so if you find out that you know some outcomes are not being met um, or you uh, you didn't actually carry out the tasks that you intended to um, and the process evaluation portion you can go back and you know adjust um, certain aspects of your uh, plan so you can reach those outcomes um, and even though I listed uh, time and resources as a weakness it can also be um, actually a strength of this model and the long term because if you put a lot of time into addressing early on barriers that can potentially affect uh, your proposed intervention or maybe you find out that you know policy certain policy in place um, would prevent the actual uh, implementation of your intervention you can adjust it so you can actually still carry that out and uh, try to reach that desired outcome so lessons I learned from the Wilcox case study um, a thorough assessment um, although good it can lead to a lot of information um, I know for me in the epidemiological assessment portion I came up with a lot of information um, like on you know asthma and um, uh, pe people driving to work in, for a long time that really didn't have a lot to do with um, my health outcome and I left that information out um, you may not have enough time to actually complete your outcome evaluation the duration of the case study was only two years um, which really wasn't sufficient uh, or enough time to actually measure the um, desired outcome to see if I reached it um, another issue was that you know when you're proposing your objectives um, they're really reliant on how much resources you have so I had to do a lot of um, you know uh, reconstructing my objectives and my goals because I didn't necessarily have the resources to carry out my original plans and sustainability is key to meeting the outcomes in the long run because um, for this case study we were provided uh, $50,000 for two years but once that money is done what else um, is gonna you know what's gonna actually help keep that program going um, funding is very very crucial because like I said you only have two years and if you know funding stops if that means that your program stops then you'll won't necessarily ever reach those outcomes that you uh, intended to thanks for watching bye